Hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this butterfly tube scarf. And the reason why it's called tube scarf because it's made in the round, which is really awesome because it makes it double thick. And also uh, it allows you to use stitches that you wouldn't normally get to use very easily for a scarf. like. For instance, I have this uh, stitch that I discovered back when I first uh, started designing my own stuff uh, called the butterfly stitch and I don't really get to use it for a lot of things because it's it's worked in the round so it's really really good for like um, you know gloves, fingerless gloves, hats and uh, things like that. It's difficult to really make it look good in like a, an afghan or something like that so when uh, I saw this person share a tube scarf I thought, oh, that's so cool. And I was doing themed uh, posts on my Facebook page at the time. And I went to look for other tube scarves and I only found one other. And I'm like, what? Tube scarves are so cool and they're so warm. I would love to. I've never made one. But I thought, I have to try to make one. And I have all this scrap yarn that I've had forever. I have so much scrap yarn. So I thought, well, this would be a great project to use up my scrap yarn. So I went ahead and I grabbed... Um, several colors. I, I grabbed five, started with five, and actually ran out of this light color right at the very last stitch. So I got so super lucky because these aren't uh, full. They were almost full. These two, this one here was a full skein. This one was a little bit more than half, and these were um, probably just about half. And then the other one, the lighter color that I had, barely had any. But because you're going to be doing a repeat, of you know the red color uh, one two and then you'll have it again three times those colors you're definitely going to need a lot of so I, I saved those for the ones I, I had another skein of this color so I knew that I could safely do those colors um, three times but the other ones the lighter colors this one and the other lighter color I only had you know not as much but I only needed to repeat them twice use those colors twice in a repeat. So um, it's really easy to make a tube scarf and I'll show you how to do the stitch. And then pretty much after that, you can just, uh, I'll tell you how I did my color pattern so you can repeat that if you like. I did mix it up a little bit uh, throughout. Like maybe I would forget and do an extra row here or there of a color and I would just leave it. But for the most part, I did have a, a method to my madness so I'll show you exactly how I did for my main part of when I, I switched my colors and stuff like that. So first off, uh, I recommend getting five different colors. So if you have a lot of scrap yarn and you have five colors that really look good together, again, I told you I ran out of my lighter color, um, but five is uh, pretty decent and made a pretty decent length scarf. My scarf measures widthwise this way. Um, five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And then the whole length of the scarf was 62 inches long or 157 and a half centimeters. But you can keep going as long as you want. And I used a six millimeter hook or a size J hook for the US and a pair of scissors. Now, for the most part, you're not gonna be using these pair of scissors, even though you're gonna be having a lot of color change, changes because when you change colors, I, let me see if I can do this, Ugh. show you here, see? I just carried my color up with me for the most part. And you wanna make sure when you carry your color up, you don't wanna pull it too tightly, loosely carry it up. And so I didn't really have to hide any of my tails in the middle. They just stay in the middle of the scarf, so that's awesome. And I only had to hide the tails here on like this section on my, on both ends the ones that you could, that could possibly pop out the end. And the very first row of the scarf is just double crochets and I also ended the scarf with just a row of double crochets. And then I, the rest of it is butterfly stitch. So go ahead and, and choose the color that you wanna use for your very first and second color and then you can just move the rest out of the way. For this tutorial, for the purposes of, of this tutorial, I'm gonna be using some thicker, chunkier yarn just so that you can see the stitching a little bit better. So on uh, the camera itself it may seem like my scarf is way bigger but it's just because this is like 
thick, chunky yarn. Okay, to begin your scarf, I recommend create create your slip down a bit down your yarn so that you have uh, so that you can hide your tail and your finished product will be a lot cleaner. So once you got your slip knot, you want to go ahead and I chained 40 for my scarf, which gave me that measurement that I showed you. Um, but the stitch itself takes multiples of two. So if you want to make it thicker or thinner, then just make sure that the ending chain that you have is in a multiple of two, an even number. So go ahead and do your chain and I will see you back here in a minute. Also, it's best for this beginning chain if you kind of do it loosely. The chain's too tight. But don't make them too loose either. Try to keep them uh, as uniform, but not too loose, too tight. You don't want it to be too tight though. That's really important because the stitches themselves are so much looser. So if you, if you make it too tight, then you're gonna really see on the end that it's gonna be pulling and it won't be you know, as even there on the end. So just make sure it's not too tight. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 40, okay. Once you have your chain of 40, you can follow your chain down to make sure that it's not twisted at all. That it's, it's completely not twisted. And then make sure you're holding on to that ending chain. And then I'm gonna go in through just that top loop only. And I'm gonna leave the other two parts of the chain here on the bottom. I'm gonna be working on only that top loop and I'm going to slip stitch into that chain and then into the loop that's on my hook to create this ring and again you can check it is not twisted in any way and then you want to chain two and that chain two is going to count as your very first double crochet of the row and also uh, this tail here kind of shows you your very first stitch of the row so in itself it's kind of a stitch marker though you don't really need it so uh, again I'm only going to be using in that top and leaving the only two I mean leaving the other two parts of the chain below so you're going to be putting double crochets and all your stitches around and since you had you have 40 chains you should have 40 double crochets so go ahead take your time Put one double crochet in each of your 40 stitches around, count your stitches, and I'll see you at the end of the round. Okay, when you get to the end of your round, make sure you count your stitches and that you have the same amount of the chain that you began with. I started with the chain of 40, so I should have 40 double crochets. And remember, the chain two at the beginning does count as one of those crochets, so you should have actually 39 uh, double crochets and a chain two. So at the end of the row, you want to slip stitch on the top of that chain two and then chain two, actually chain one. So like I said, the first and the last round will be double crochets. When it comes to the color changes, I never counted this as one of the rows of the color changes. I only counted the actual butterfly stitch as how many rows of the color that I did. I just only did this uh, row in this color because I was starting with it. And it's the same thing with this. I did the last row double crochets only because I, uh, with this color, only because I was, that was the last color I used. Row two, we're on row two. And you're going to insert your hook back into that chain two and pull up a loop. And then you're gonna yarn over and only pull through one of these you have two loops on your hook, but you're only going to be pulling through one of those loops. So only that first one. So essentially you're chaining with that first loop. And then you're going to be going into the second stitch of your row because the butterfly stitch takes two stitches to create. And you're going to be going under both loops of the stitch. Pull up a loop. And then you're going to work these three loops on your hook just like you would a normal double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, pull through two. And then very important, chain one. Always chain one at the end. So then you're gonna come over to your next two stitches, because again, butterfly stitch takes two stitches. 
and you're always going to be going under both loops of the stitch. I know I get a lot of wanting to know if, if I'm going under both or one. I'm going under both loops. So go underneath both loops of the stitch, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, only go through one of those loops, and then you'll immediately, without yarning over, go right into the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, then you're just going to work this as a double crochet, chain one. And then again, moving over to your next two. So without yarning over, just insert your hook, pull up a loop, then you'll yarn over and only pull through one, then insert your hook in the next, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. And I'll show you one more time. Insert your, your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, only pull through one of those, then go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then you'll do that double crochet as usual. Very important always to chain one after. Okay, so I'm at the end of my row, just finishing up my butterfly stitch, but at the very end of your row with the butterfly stitch, you don't wanna chain one because you're gonna create your chain one by going into this big chain two space. This is our beginning chain one, and then our first part of our butterfly stitch. So this is our big old loop at the beginning, and you're gonna be inserting your loop, I mean your hook into that loop and slip stitching. Now, our first actual like butterfly stitch is here. So this is just kind of, just two regular spaces, but we're still gonna be using these to create our, butter, our very first butterfly stitch of our row. You wanna chain one, and then you're gonna be going in to the space before the stitch that you just slipped in, slip stitch into to insert your hook and pull up a loop. Then you'll yarn over and only pull through one of those, and then you'll go to the space after the ending slip stitch and pull up your second loop. And then you will create your butterfly stitch as normal, chain one. And again, see how it creates just this single stitch here at the end? That's what you're gonna use every time to slip stitch into. And then you'll be doing your first part of the butterfly stitch on this side, and then your second part of the butterfly stitch in this space here to create your very first one, just like we did with this. Hope that made sense. So now we're gonna be using the wings of the butterfly, like I said before, which there is only like a piece of string that separates, and then I'm calling these two the wings. So you're gonna insert it into the first wing, pull up a loop, and then only pull through that first loop on your hook, insert it into the second wing, pull up a loop, and then you'll do your double crochet as normal. And remember, chain one. And then move over to your next set of wings, insert your hook, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the next wing, then do your double crochet as normal. And this is how you're gonna be working your butterfly stitch for the rest of your scarf. Okay, real quick, uh, I wanted to show you uh, to end the row two. Uh, again, you wanna use that big old space here at the end slip stitch in that space and then again you'll chain one and again you will start your first stitch part of the butterfly stitch and that stitch uh, the one before it and then again after pull up a loop and you will do your finish your butterfly stitch you'll always begin your butterfly stitch that way and this is why I said you won't really need this because this is, it's pretty easy to, to see at the end of your row where you are. Uh, another thing is when you do want to change your color, let me go back to after you've slip stitch into the big old ending stitch at the end. Okay, so you want to take your new color and I just take it and fold it like this and slip it in my loop that I had before pull it down to tighten, and once you've got that tightened, you have your new color. And then go ahead and 
chain one with the new color. You can pull that first color down just to make sure it's, you know, taunt with the rest of it. Keep it even. And then this should be a clear color change. And then you just insert it into the previous space like before. Pull through only the first loop. And you want to go into the next. And what I did when I had an extra, you know, color that I was, you know, carrying with me, I always tried to make sure that I didn't crochet it with me. Like, I, you leave it here. You never take your color with you because you're working it around and you're always going to come back to it. So just make sure you don't work over it at all. I just try to make sure I didn't work over it at all because remember, you're going to need to, again, pull this up. And if you work over it, then you're going to be pulling it up from here <laughs> instead of here directly in the middle where you want it to stay. So just make sure because it tries to hide here. You just want to make sure you pull it to the side. Do not work over it. Work in that space only. And then insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then do your first beginning butterfly stitch like that. And then again, you'll be working your butterfly stitch all the way around. And I'll show you uh, my color that I, I did. I did three rows of this first color before I did my first color change, but I just wanted to show you real quick how to do a color change. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish this row so I can show you uh, how I carried my yarn with me. Okay, remember at the end of a row, remember you don't uh, have to chain one. You just slip stitch right into that big space at the end. to end your row round sorry and what I would do after that is I would just pick up when I wanted to change colors I would pick up my other color you don't want to cut your yarn until you are done blending that color in uh, and I'll show you the color pattern in a minute how I did it but um, I was doing some of one color then when I would add it incorporate a new color in show you this real quick see I would keep it I would hold it because in three rows I'm just gonna pull that color back up and use it again I didn't want to have to keep adding and, and uh, cutting and adding and cutting so I would just pull it up and how I did that was by keeping my yarn attached so on the inside here you can see that I still attach and I just bring it up so I'm gonna bring up this color and pull it through my loop now you could pull the old color you were just using tight and that'll tighten up your loop but make sure that this is not too loose I mean too tight or too loose I would just make sure it was exactly pulled up to the length that I needed up to my row because sometimes it can be three long you just want to make sure when you pull it up that you do not have it to, if you pull it to where this is way too tight then it's going to be lower than the row so you just want to make sure you keep it loose let it flow if it's pulling not good pull up more until it's loose then once you think it's good then pull the first color tight down and then you're ready to use your new color and you'll always start by chaining one and then going into that previous stitch and then the one after to create your first butterfly stitch and then you'll continue all the way around and that's how you will carry your color up with you okay so I wanted to to show you the exact color pattern that I have because I have a feeling that some people would like to know exactly uh, but I can quickly tell you what I was uh, going for which is having three colors uh, three rows of the color the main color I'm using and then when I start to incorporate the next color I'll only have one row of that and then three on the other side and then after those those rows um, I go for a two row because I, I want to reduce in color and I want to increase in this color so the next two would would be two rows of the new color two rows of the old so in with the new out with the old and then I would um, usually I would create three because I had two here so now I'm doing three here and one here and three here now this was the basic idea behind it but I would always mix it up 
Sometimes I would forget to change. Sometimes I liked or had more of a color, so I would add more to it. This you can see it's kind of the same three with a new row of the new color incorporated and then two of each and then again three but this time I didn't put the new color I just did one because there's three two one here and then had the three so I ended up changing it up a little bit and doing um, two and then one because I didn't have as much of this color but basically this is what I was trying to do throughout the whole thing you can see here I have three of this color with one in the, in the middle and then I would do kind of a countdown with the old and then a count up with this. So there's one, two, then three. And this is three, two, and one. So this is how I generally did my color pattern. Like I said, it wasn't 100%, but that is the basic idea of the colors uh, out with the old and with the new. See, three, two, one, one, two, three as I mixed it together and then once I got my three row this would become my main color and I typically only had one color of this which was the one that was going out but sometimes to incorporate the new color I also wanted to have three and three on either side of it so I would have sometimes a row where I'd have a single row of the old color a single row of the new which I like to do that a lot because I think that looked really cool so I hope this helps you color your scarf Please don't forget to like and share this pattern. It helps me out so much. Uh, share my tutorials, share my pattern. I have a free links to all my patterns underneath the video. I also don't have uh, my newsletter that you can sign up I, or I have a roundup of 10 patterns of some kind of theme going on. I'll share that as well as on my Facebook page. I share free crochet patterns daily. And then at the end of the week, the next week actually, I will share the previous week's best of. So like the top three, I will put on uh, a new post that I will share every week as well. So uh, go check it out. I hope I see you there.